Clarissa Renamosa. Hi, Tabitha. Hi. We are live on all the platforms and we are going to discover some things about you. First of all, who are you? What do you do? What are you passionate about? Let us know. So I'm Clarissa Redamoza. I'm um, a U.S. Army, uh, a U.S. <laughs> Army veteran <laughs> that can't speak this morning. <laughs> uh, I'm also an actor uh, and a writer, and I have a 15-year-old daughter that is pretty awesome. Uh, so yeah, I I like to paint and skate and get in accidents <laughs> but uh yeah that's a little bit about me wow so army vet mother actor writer mm. and then you have your hobbies which is yeah. great we have to have those yeah. um in the world of acting mm -hmm. i don't know how Miss Deb came down the line, but I know I sent the sides over to Talent Direct Agency. Mm -hmm. And then there were, again, I had been started casting this process in 2019, the end of, and then with the expectation or hope to go into production in 2020. Well, COVID happened. Mm -hmm. So I was like going to scratch, you know, some year plus ago. And got your self tape. Mm -hmm. Did you have the opportunity to choose this, or did your did TDA just go, "Hey, we think you might like this"? Well, they sent it to me, and then um, I and and asked if I would confirm, you know, or decline. And then I seen your name, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like, of course, you know, and. Um, so yeah, they sent it to me and I looked over it and I immediately, you know, felt, I felt a need for Miss Deb in the world, you know? <laughs> and so I was so excited just to be able to play her as a character and really, you know, get into her, She's a very complex onion, you know? So it was very fun to kind of add all of these emotions on top of each other, but stay so together. You were <laughs> very, um, I don't know if you watched Mia Bella's. Yes, I did. And she <laughs> called you a very serious clown. Yeah. <laughs> She's like a clown, but very serious. <laughs> I loved that. Oh my God, she made me laugh. <gasps> yes. Because she didn't know, I don't think any of the young actors were, could understand the dynamic and the power play um, that, that was expected of them. Again, we're, we were working with five and six year olds. So mm -hmm. that's scary. You're coming in with an intensity they're not used to. They're like, oh, when I feel or see that energy, I stop, you know, freeze. And we're like, no, 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 you have to respond. And yeah. it's just a wild time. Who is Miss Deb to you? To me, Miss Deb was, uh, she, she is a woman that, you know, kind of always had had it all together she had you know in high school she you know was very social and she had friends and she married she ends up marrying her high school uh sweetheart and you know when he passes is i think for me the way i i interpreted her is she was still not at the point of acceptance from her grief from her husband so she didn't she didn't really replan a life for herself and she continued to walk in the same shoes that she was with in in her marriage so she still you know had the same plans for the you know her house to look the same way to have a family to have these things but without the other person is where her dilemma came about and in in the acting for me because those things were still so relevant and important to her but she 
she kind of had that bitter, like the resentment of it all having to do it on her own, you know? I think her loss of control and then needing for control. Yes. You, you played out very well as, cause that was the outside of the onion. Like we could mm -hmm. tell Deb was a control freak. Yes. She needed things to be orderly. She needed things to go her way. Mm -hmm. And she worked very hard to have that life. Mm -hmm. So to her, it's just expected. And I think the dynamic that we see between you and Samantha, Samantha coming from absolute chaos to now this very structured scenario. Mm -hmm. And how that plays out is, well, you will soon see. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> um, and yeah, so Miss Deb is such a curious character. And you, again, with the self tape, the second I saw it, I was like, no way. How does someone get the character so fully and all you've seen is a page? Yeah. And yeah, so you gave her an, a new life because I was like, well, she couldn't look like this. She could be like this. She, she had some flexibility, mm -hmm. but the way you took it on, I was like, that's it. But there was no question. It was it. Um, and, and it was awesome. You knew exactly how she would dress, how she would be. You literally gave her a life. Thank so. you for giving me the opportunity to bring her to life for you. And I'm so happy to hear that you are happy with her outcome. Oh. <laughs> Dynamic. I have a little clip to show. I think it just came out today. Um, let's see a little sh snippet of Mrs. Jeb. <clears throat> okay, sweetie. <clears throat> Your plate goes like this. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's such a neat environment. Yes. It's such a, it was like a little playground for Miss Deb. I mean, it was her world. Um, yeah. And, you know, the art department and everyone visually like did such a fantastic job. And of course, that location was just with the wood paneling and the 1970s motif. It was just perfect. Um yeah. And so tell me a little bit, well, what attracted you to the role and what was the process for you to get into character? So what attracted me to the role was um, Ms. Deb, she had, like I personally am a widow, so I know the, the process of grief. And I think that to be able to use that uh which i've you know worked on in therapy first <laughs> before using it as a, as a craft you know but to be able to go into that place and and be able to put it on like be vulnerable in front of the camera was was really um that that was a big thing for me there. Sorry, I'm getting lost in my head right now. <laughs> my thoughts are going too many at a time. Um, but repeat it to me one more time. I'm sorry. Yeah, your process to get yeah. into the character. Yeah, so I, I used sense memory. Um, I also used Stanislavski method, you know, who, what, when, where, and why. And I... Um, I allowed myself to relive emotions in those moments that I think was why it came off how it did because it was so genuine of a feeling that you normally don't want people to see you like in that in that position you know but being able to allow yourself to go there and experience it that that was something that um, I really was, I really was proud of at the end of the day, because 
I was able to go in and come out, you know, and it wasn't effective of, you know, my mood or because I was using my own, you know, memories to get there. Uh, it, it really was nice for, for the environment around to be able to come out of, of character once that we were done and it not torture me inside, you know? <laughs> so that's like a, a big thing that I have learned with acting in the process of, you know, what's dangerous and what's you, you can and can't do for your mental health along with the process of it as well. So, um, yeah, I, I was, I was really happy that I got to use this technique specifically for Miss Depp because she um, she deserved it, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you had so much to pull on mm -hmm. in your personal life, but in the technical understanding of acting and methods, and mm -hmm. so that that's just rich and wonderful. You know, yeah. you were, um, you did so much behind the scenes. Uh, and I don't want to talk about all the breakdowns until my interview, but yes. thank you for stepping up to the plate and like <laughs> through on all things um, that had, you know, critically happened. Like every, for some reason, when there's a project that means so much to you, all these little boundaries and hurdles and challenges start popping up and yeah. like little fires everywhere and you've just got to like hope that you have the right team um that can just barrel through and and pull together and and again it was so fun because watching everyone do their highest and best contributions for the each scene oh that's a fantastic feeling i mean that's the magic of movies right yeah. yes it really so it was a pleasure to have you. And um, how does this role differ from other roles you've taken on? Um, this role, it was a little bit different because uh, I haven't worked with too many child actors, like one-on-one -on -one like that. Um, and the cool thing was like, I had a little bit of time to talk to Mirabella like first, you know, and get to know her so that she could know that like, I, I, did, I didn't want her to be too scared. You know? <laughs> I think that happened when we were uh, doing the casting call before. So, you know, I, I, I wanted to talk to her a little bit and, you know, let her, it was, it was cool to be able to share that with a child. Like, okay, I might, I might sound a little weird, but it's because, you know, being mean makes me allergic. <laughs> so I told her, so I was like, so my face might start doing some weird stuff, but don't worry. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so that was that was really cool and different for me that I, I haven't uh, had the opportunity to do before. Mm -hmm. I think you also having the role of being a mother in real life. Yeah. Um, I saw you behind the scenes in the room with Mia Bella, and you were perfectly parting her hair in, in the behind the scenes video. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I did not even know Clarissa <laughs> did her hair. <laughs> <laughs> like you just naturally stepped into certain um, roles. And I bet that assisted in that kind of bonding because we have all these wonderful photos of you guys laughing and, and yeah. just it up in the in the room back there yeah and i think that was so important and i'm really glad that you chose to do that because or or the decision for us to be able to you know get to know each other a little bit at first was really helpful because yeah like once we got there and it was like her and i you know kind of at it she she i feel like she got to really open up a lot more and and that made it so much more comfortable and and pleasing for everyone you know in the process mm -hmm. I think. so that was so cool like i loved that and doing her hair was so cute i was like oh my god like hold on it's not good enough hold on we gotta go back <laughs> like because i had to be perfect and do it perfect as miss deb like i kept no <laughs> like you know and it's funny because those things come out and yeah start to build that character and that um 
moment, yeah. It was perfect. And then the way, you know, the way we rehearsed it versus the what is happening and the props and everything on the day of set, it's like you adjusting her collar and perfectly placing this and moving things that don't need moved just yeah. to underline the kind of perfection that Miss Deb is looking for all the time. What a tough thing for a kid um, because Mia Bella was like, <laughs> Do I laugh? Do I cry? What do I do? <laughs> I know. And I would be like talking to her and they were like, okay, we're going to start. Mm, like, and then her and I would just like zone into one another. You know, she was so easy to work with really. And that's what I loved about the experience too, because she just was like there with me, you know, and she really gave me so much to work with as an actor as well. So it was, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's I don't know how to explain it. I think in the, well, we'll, we'll see it, but it's such kind of like a music box scene. There's this sort of creepier music box score mm -hmm. um, to mm -hmm. introduce you both. Mm -hmm. And like, this is what perfect could look like. But we, we know as an audience, like this is far from yeah dynamic you know there's something unhealthy here and the audience doesn't know the backstory of miss deb yet so mm -hmm. you know they may not i don't think any of the characters have yet this um uh what do you call that when you want to give them some empathy and and compassion mm -hmm. you know but the, it's not built in the first 15 minutes but it's mm -hmm. showcased that these are offbeat characters throughout the film. Yeah. Um, so that's so much fun for me. Um, yes. The, what was the most challenging part for you? I think the most challenging part for me had to have been, um, getting my hair perfect <laughs> no but it was really like i think that ocd really like just i just like getting ready for her it was i was already there and it was like not enough like it was con that that kind of led through um the day that when we were filming is like i just noticed that like that it was it was so obvious to me but it, it actually became like something that just naturally happened you know like because I knew that of her like I, I couldn't I was like trying so hard to get her perfect enough that it worked out you know like <laughs> because that's what she actually was trying to do except you know i was trying to be perfect enough for miss deb and in that it resulted into the happy you know like um one of those happy accidents you know like <laughs> so. mm -hmm. i think the audience gets to see a little bit of the making up so a a, a portion of your self tape is on there and you know it's so wild um when you're watching the self tape to the actual film but it didn't shift very much it was very close you know that's why i was like when an actor just gets it yeah. you're it's it's beyond ecstatic you know you're like whoa there's no big notes you've got it yeah you know <laughs> And I know your part was because you didn't really get to come into you have a completely separate scene, completely separate life. But, you know, where she's coming from and those actors who are building the pre part of this scene, it's so the opposite. Just yeah. absolutely gritty, dirty, raw. Yeah. And now she's with you and it's perfect, pretty neat and you're like well what what a dynamic range. yeah definitely um, 
What about a highlight for you? I think you mentioned or gave a nod to working with the child actor. That was also yeah. a highlight for me, um, especially at the age of five. That's a yeah. very, um, like they understand acting, but yet they don't understand acting. You know, yeah. like they're just starting to get the world. Um, yes. But it's so easy for them to just tap into, like they don't really have to like, oh, they don't overthink. I think, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like, they're just like, you know, like you tell them, okay, you're going to feel like this and I want to see this. And then like, it's so easy for them to just go there. I mean, with her, she was so open to just, she was, she was great, you know? Um, so yeah, that was a huge highlight and, and everybody was so sweet on set and um, it was funny um, when I was leaving some of the crew, they were outside and they were like, you know, we were wondering like how this like little sunray, like a sun, like ball of sunshine is gonna like pull this character out, you know, like, and I was like, yeah, I don't know. I, in, in real life, I like, you know, I, I'm very social and a happy person, but I love playing those dark and like more, not villainous characters, but you know, those like rough, characters that have so much so so many layers you know it's yeah i call it grit because yeah. even miss deb was gritty mm -hmm. we just didn't fully understand why mm -hmm. but i would love the opportunity to continue the story right um, <laughs> you know? <laughs> absolutely um so did you walk away with any insights? Yes, I I feel like after being on this set and it was your passion film, you know, like um and and I'm a I'm a writer and it just is I think that you really uh inspired me to want to take my writing to another level. You know what I mean? Like seeing, you know, all of the pieces of stuff coming together and your creation, your pe like the people that you created are, are here now. And it's like, it's a world, you created a world, you mm -hmm. know, and it's so beautiful. And I think that seeing that and the dedication that you've put into it and the time, like I, I walked away feeling like really inspired and like really good about doing this project, you know? So thank you so much for being such an inspire, inspiring woman, like for other filmmakers and, you know. Aww. Yeah, yeah, so. Yes. <laughs> Not trying to make you blush or anything. <laughs> well, I think it's such a labor of love. It's also yeah. a labor of forgiveness. It's a labor of logistics. It's a labor of, little fires everywhere. It's, it's mm. so many, many, many decisions to make. And it all starts with the words on paper. Yeah. And then you develop, hopefully your budget. Yeah. And then mm. you bring on that first producer. And, mm. and in that case it was me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to produce it so badly and I knew what it would take. And yeah. I didn't have the budget to afford a producer for the amount of months I would need them. Yeah in the pre-production to production and post to see the whole thing through. Yes. And um, I absolutely adore filmmaking. I think that there are, I don't think this is a story for everyone. Mm -hmm. This is a niche, niche audience. Mm -hmm. I have my apprehensions, anxieties and considerations and concerns. Mm -hmm. I also have the, fearlessness and excitement around for the right people, they're going to sit down and pop popcorn and say, eh, yeah, let's, yeah. you yeah. know? And for people who maybe this isn't for, maybe they can be a little conditioned or open to new ways of empathically seeing different people in, in those environments. Like, wow. I've never experienced this, but there's a whole world of people who do. 
Yeah. No, we're talking about the underbelly of society. Mm -hmm. Many people turn their head um, yeah. because these are the addicts of the world, the mental health abusers, the this, the that, you know, like it's like mm, too messy. Yeah. You know, I would rather keep away from that lifestyle. But that's, I think, what I love about it as well is because of the fact that I mean, I don't want to go in too much to, you know, everything that's go the chaos that's happening in the world right now, you know, but, you know, we, we are faced with certain, we, they get, we get some news updates about certain things that are happening throughout the world, but even in our own society, you know, like we hush, hush and cover mm -hmm. that. I mean, what I like writing uh, psychological thrillers. So I'm all about like that that world yeah <laughs> like so you know like finding those people and those those things and those moments that we're too embarrassed to show people you know like those personal moments and or those things yeah like they're so much there's so much chaos and so much richness that you can use to to really promote something that people don't may not see every day but we all know that it's happening mm -hmm. you know so yeah i mean i think that it's like you said having people having empathy because there's so much stuff that gets desensitized these days you know so like having something where you can sit there and you can see something for what it is and walk out hopefully like having your eyes more open and, and understanding people on a deeper level, you know? Absolutely. I think that's a, I think that's the, uh, like human, like a responsibility as an artist. And then also mm -hmm. the human condition is so deep and rich and um, it's so layered that everyone can do a story on the psychology or understanding of any level of, of folk, whether it be the middle class struggle, the lower class struggle, the upper class, you know, like it doesn't matter, but write something you know. And yeah. if you don't know it, have people at the table who do know it. Yeah. Well, for, um, for those checks and balances um, to really be sure that you have an honest story. And yeah. I love, I really want to read some psychological yeah. thrillers. Um, I love yeah. psycho thriller. It's yes. probably my favorite genre uh, mm -hmm. outside of trauma drama. And mm -hmm. I think that's dark and, and honest. I'm yes. in. Right? Yes. Uh, I oh, I have more questions for you. Awesome. <laughs> And then we can go off scripts totally. Right. <laughs> uh, what was your favorite scene to film? You only filmed your one scene. So that is kind of null and void. Yeah. You know, I, I won and done. I went in hard and I, you know, <laughs> got a home run. <laughs> that scene, uh, which was, it was one of my favorites because we were all cozy. Every other like environment was harsh. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, you kind of said this, if there was any highlights uh, or a person that stood out to you on set, you know, we know Mia Bella did because she yes. was the star. <laughs> the star of the show. I see you girl. <laughs> and she, she's so cute on her interview. I was just, I loved it. Oh my God. She's so awesome. Yeah. She was so, she was so awesome. And she was very, I loved her. She was very confident and she just, you know, she listened really well. Like she was a pleasure to work with. So <laughs> thanks for kiss, picking an awesome kid. Yeah. Tongues all over the place today. <laughs> well, what was so curious about, the child actor is, you know, obviously you need them to perform in such a way, right? So very specifically, 
but you need their parent or parents, guardian, whomever is their, um, you know, person in charge of the said child to be a hundred percent on board. Yeah. Because you're able to cheat all of the scenes. Like she doesn't have to be a part of any of the negative stuff, but it's going to be edited in such a way that I feel like she is in the environment and Mia Bella can't ever actually watch the film until yeah. she's 18 or 20 yeah. or <laughs> we can see your little parts. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, that's such a bummer. She'll be able to see her demo reel in little mm -hmm. moments. Mm -hmm. But she will not be able to watch the whole yeah. film. Um, so I just find that to be so funny. And just knowing that like, the parents have to okay that and that yeah. it's a very gritty film. And are they, you know, are they really truly okay? I had one um, parent early on and she said, no, this is too heavy of a film. And I said, completely understand, totally agree. It is. Yeah. Um, but we are not exposing the actor to anything we're mm -hmm. able to see every scene yeah um so that was a big protection um and yeah that's the end the end of my rant <laughs> <laughs> no but that's the uh, yeah so it's a it's a whole a whole thing mm -hmm. so like having a, a child yeah they are they they see the fun in it you know and they don't have to see like the the harshness of it you know unless if they really want to or the parent allows them to but mm -hmm. yeah that's it's just so cool though that like she has her parents that are supporting her to already have a career for herself as well you know like i wish that my parents would have done that you know like but we're here <laughs> well and look at the way opportunities and technology and obviously social media and a number of other things have propelled us in a number of ways when i was younger i remember they did talent scouting at malls and you would go line up and then you would get on this kind of stage and you do your thing and maybe they call you, maybe they don't, but there was, it was very, very different than now. You are your own agency. You can literally do whatever you want yeah. and, and be your own, um, every, everything. It's just absolutely amazing. Yeah. But you can have your own show, you can have your own films, you can have like, and that's what's crazy too, is to think about it. Like I, I was born in the 80s. So like, even thinking about, you know, when I first got a phone or having a pager or, you know, like coding on MySpace, because how else are you going to get a picture up there? You know, like, and now it's just a click of a button for everything. And we have so much uh opportunity for advancement and it's it's so awesome when i was actually uh still in film school getting my bachelor's during the pandemic and um when when i went through that you know like everything kind of transitioned for actors as well like you know you're not going you're self-taping now and you can submit anywhere you know like you don't have to be there anymore you know or mm -hmm. You know, like some auditions, you still go in person, but most of them, they just self tape everything. So mm -hmm. it's the convenience of it. And I was glad I was in school at the time because I feel like we were the pioneers. <laughs> we had to continue acting like online. Like mm -hmm. what else are we going to do? We're going to acting school and we can't be around people, you know? So it was, it was challenging and a lot of people quit school during the pandemic you know um but i i you know there were some of us that really like came through and we finished you know and and it was i feel like i got all, a lot of tools that i wouldn't have known if i wasn't in the school going through it as it was being created for us mm -hmm. now you know so 
it's really interesting how much the last four years has changed. <laughs> and, yeah. and well, it's interesting is probably the best word for it because there were positives and negatives and it was just such a dynamic shift and people were like pivot, pivot, pivot. And some people could, some people absolutely could not it really depended on your industry. Yeah. But you know, just like with anything, it opened doors for a lot of people to have freedoms that they wouldn't have otherwise had. Um, it also closed a lot of doors. <laughs> So it was yeah. just like, it was a really wild time. Um, but I remember talking about p pickles and piranhas, you know, from that time and yeah. going on interviews and doing everything and like super hopeful that this was only going to be two weeks and we would just get back to producing. Yeah. And it was three years of yeah. waiting. <laughs> I know. I went when when the pandemic happened. They told us we were going to be out of school for two weeks. So I'm like, oh, like uh, at the time, my husband was living in in Egypt, and so it's like, let me go to Egypt for you know uh, for two weeks, a uh, perfect time, and then I'll be right back for school. Two days after, my flight got canceled, and I got stuck there for five months because of the borders. Gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. So like, but it taught me resilience like i i was i continued going to school like using internet that was super choppy in egypt while i was supposed to be in florida you know and my daughter was with my mom luckily in california so like my time like was all over the place you know it was crazy wow. but it was overcoming that i think like and that time and then um i think it really showed me resilience in myself because after his death, um, I kind of, I, I was in 2020. So, so I just put all of my energy into my acting and my school and it, it, it just flourished. You know, I, I used all of that energy and instead of being in a negative place, I just like invested it and honed in to the craft and like try to digest as much information to distract me from the reality of what everything was, you know, but it was, it made me such a better person at the end of the day, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. How do you think that informs your filmmaking, like your writing style and um, have you produced your, any of your writings yet? So when I was in school, I did produce um, a short that I had done uh, with my daughter, actually, and it was on the death of her father, uh, like dealing with grief, you know, with a child, with a teenager, um, mm -hmm. you know, trying to navigate her way without the other parent, you know. And um, other than that, right now, I have a feature that I'm writing with John Maria, my colleague. And um, we, that one's a psychological thriller. It's a, a, you know, at a retreat at a lake house that, you know, goes wrong. <laughs> but I have been working um, in a women's trauma group through the VA. And so I use cognitive behavioral therapy. Uh, like they have a workbook. So it really like makes you break down like your triggers or, you know, any kind of thing that is, um, is, is it coming up in, in a negative way during, in your life and kind of just write, write it down. And then you break it down. Like if you're in court and you're against yourself or you're for yourself, like what, what are the, you know, like, are you feeling guilty? Be, like, should you feel guilty for this? Or, you know, it, it really like makes you look at your, your triggers to help you untangle them from like other things that maybe aren't a danger or, you know, aren't um, really going to happen. You're just paranoid because something has happened in the past, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, I feel like, like with acting, like therapy is super important as well. And it's so helpful even to understand the psychology of a character, 
you know, um, because you may never do something, but this character might do it, you know? So why would they do that? And you really like to give a truthful performance, you have to really try to find that understanding in your character, you know, and not judge them. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, there, there are some offbeat, unforgiving characters in this film. Yes. Um, and one of my concerns is if I trigger, and I should say when I trigger certain folk in the audience, um, mm -hmm. people who are not the niche market and maybe didn't fully understand what they were walking into, mm -hmm. um, because they're supporting an actor, or supporting me, um, and you know, they just were like, viewer discretion is advised. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, there's nods to animal cruelty as well as domestic violence and a number of other offbeat um, moral dilemmas. Yeah. So <laughs> I have reached, but I haven't gotten a response to a pro, um, CBT and DBT therapist who mm -hmm. I'm hoping to get one to two just to um, have it for security and safety. I'd rather have mm -hmm. and not then somebody yeah. be like, wow, I'm really triggered. I need to leave or yeah. some, you know, and walk out and be emotional. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that. Um, but here's the problem. I love stuff like this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> for me, I'm like, it doesn't strike me as too heavy, mm -hmm. but to someone else, it's probably like, unnecessarily heavy mm -hmm. whereas i'm like wow i've always wanted to do a fight scene like that and it like for yeah. bucket list like really nailing the authenticity of it yes where the audience member may be like that was a little too real yeah me. um and then I, I and then i want to pop up out of the the box and be like it's just a movie <laughs> surprise <laughs> Welcome back to reality. <laughs> so yeah, I've, I've reached an organization just to see if that's possible. Have they ever had therapists on site for potential triggers um, during a sh you know a, a film screening event? Mm -hmm. And so I'm looking into it. Yeah, I, I, I'm like, I hope. Right. I've never heard of that, but it is a very, it is a very good idea to have that, you know, because people, yeah, they, I, I know I've walked out of films and sometimes the, like if they, if they're good films, they're going to make you feel something, you know, but <laughs> I mean, my favorite film since I was like five was Casino by Scorsese. So like that was full, like in my life has kind of unraveled in like the same type of of genres that I like. So I feel like so connected to film because, you know, in being younger, I would watch these people and their circumstances and the resilience of overcoming certain things, even if it was violent or if it was difficult, like, and, and those people became kind of like family, you know, like for me, if I watched Robert De Niro, he was like, you know, he was my first crush when I was little, <laughs> but like he, if it like watching him is like, you know, a family member that I would just want to hug, you know, like mm -hmm. it's like certain people that have been a part of your life just from watching them in films. So for me, I definitely like, I know this is way off track, but that's what really kind of made me want to act. It's like the, the impact of, actors since I was growing up was so strong that I feel like people are so influenced by other people you know and if like I want to create like a safe uh, like a safe circle like of of performance or if somebody you know watches something and they see me like I can I can be a positive influence on uh, as a person as well like it, it's not me it's a character but you know what you bring to that character that really is, like makes people feel something you know 
-hmm. that connection that, you know, so I believe that, you know, telling stories and sharing stories with people is like such, such a great gift to, to the world because you're making somebody that may feel alone, not alone anymore, you know? And yes. Yeah. It's important, you know? Yes. And that's why I was saying like every community, every um, niche mm -hmm. section of the world. Um, and if you can really truly speak to an area, please do, because there's someone out there who hasn't seen themselves on screen yet. Yeah. You know, we have had um, the topic of diversity and diversification across the board. People are getting sick of the same story. Mm, yeah. We want to see more experiences. Um, we want to see, you know, the human condition. And it's not that we don't want to see a, a Marvel movie or whatever. Uh, they're going to keep making them. They're, they're yeah. Cool. Yeah. But in the independent world, I'm just in awe and in uh, complete enjoyment with the magic that goes into uh, passion projects. I could work on one every day. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and I, yeah, I mean, I love, I love being on set. I love, right. Again, I love the preparation of it and so even you know as an actor when I'm on set for other things I'm just always like watching or you know like making friends with you know the crew like because you see them often you know like in different sets and stuff but like the it it's it's just they're so everybody ha is important, you know, and there's a place for and a job for everybody. And you could not, this is not a business that's like a one man show. Like mm -hmm. you have, and having a really good team is like what makes the magic happen, you know, I feel, and what everyone brings to it. And so, um, I don't know. I, I applaud everybody that is a part of the cast and the crew because each person played a, an important part to making this project happen. As with, you know, all um, projects that, that I've done, you know, like I've seen people really like putting time and dedication. I actually, like, I can't say her name, but I was a stand-in for a huge uh, celebrity recently. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you her name off off camera, but I can't talk about it now. Um, but she, yeah, she uh, is. She was her dedication to getting things exactly as she wanted them. Like I pulled fifteen and eighteen hour days. Like she was it was such an inspiration as well. Like, you know, so to see people in any stage and, you know, she is just like you or me, you know, like I'm here to work and I'm taking this serious and I don't want to leave until I have what I want, you know? And it was just so empowering because it's like, you know, like every stage, it's just like how much time and effort and dedication that you put into your craft you're gonna see it you know like come out and it is it's been it's been a beautiful ride this <laughs> crazy but beautiful you know in in the mm -hmm. acting world and um connecting with people networking it's it's so small when you realize it once you're like more connected like oh you know we're all connected you know Mm -hmm. history so it's interesting yeah i'm excited to have a special guest at the screening sandy leiterman will be there um mm -hmm. he's coming from being the miami film commissioner to fort lauderdale to now uh i may have it wrong but some presidency vice president president of film florida so always staying in yeah uh, the you know they're cool. <laughs> yeah, the film world. 
Yeah. And so that's really exciting and some press and, and everything that all the all the goods. I can't wait. I really think we should do a um, a reaction testimonial with you mm -hmm. because you don't <laughs> know what is leading up to your part. Oh my god! Fun to see, like, oh, that's what that was. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I'm so excited to see it. I can't wait. I want to see like a lot of the films I've done. It, people, I look in the audience and they're like watching it like this. <laughs> they're like, oh no! And they're gasping, like, oh, don't do it. Yeah. You know. And yeah. I can anticipate a few moments, but again, I want to create something that's a feeling. Yes. I don't want you to walk away going. Um, well, that was good. That was okay. Yeah. And it's forgotten. You'll remember this film. Yes. Whether you liked it or not. <laughs> You're being the mother here. Like, whether you like it or not, <laughs> you will remember it. <laughs> um, that I'm very confident. Um, I love your shirt, by the way. Yeah. I to say that earlier. I want yeah. one. I need so one. Men. I heard about the merch drop, by the way. There's yeah. some merch. Yeah, I'm telling people, like, the thing is with merch, especially yeah. with cast and crew, the earlier you are, the mm -hmm. first look you have. Yeah. Once the sizes are gone, they're gone. Yeah. So it'll be so much fun to see the merch flying off. I, I did right. small runs because I was like, I don't know what people actually want. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it'll be super, super, like, I'm stoked about it. Um, I'm so excited. Let me get to our final two yes. questions, which are just about you, your perspective. What's the greatest lesson you've learned in life? The greatest lesson I've learned in life is... You know, I've had a, a lot of health issues in my past and and scares. And so sometimes I feel like I'm living on borrowed time. Like some things I'm like, I should I, I'm I could have not survived that, you know, mm -hmm. if we didn't have the medical um technology that we have now or the ways they do stuff I could have easily died you know and um so I think for me it's giving myself the freedom to treat every day as an extra day mm. you know and not not wasting it in grief anymore. Like I spent most of my twenties grieving. So, you know, it's just that time in my life now where it's like, I want to do what makes me happy. And I want to have that limitless, like, I don't want to just be depressed or be sad or, you know, like life is too short and I've lost people at, young ages you know like they're they're young for passing away and so it it reminded me always like life is so short and you know don't really hold grudges or or hold hate in your heart because you're only hurting yourself you know and to give to give myself the freedom to live because I felt guilty for a long time for being a survivor, you know, the whole survivor's guilt thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just, you know, allowing myself to live again has been like the most powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a profound statement, Krista. <laughs> because to be present to every day and to live it as though it is extra. This is your bonus day. What are you gonna do with it? Mm -hmm. um, I'm consistently reminding myself and doing check-ins and um, I'm very therapy positive forward with all of that uh, for many, many years. It's been so helpful. Um, and 
I'm always kind of like, there, there's a great quote, I'll paraphrase it. What are you going to do with this tiny, precious life? You know, this one wild and precious life or whatnot. And I was, when, in reading that quote, I'm like, yeah, what are you going to do, Tabitha? <laughs> you know, like, Come on, girl. <laughs> uh, because like you said, I've dealt with a number of losses, um, yeah. some really complex, some very easy, mm -hmm. some very confusing and, and the like. And I was like, whoa, you just aren't guaranteed tomorrow. So if you get up, yeah. manage that, like really try to, I try to do always a step in the direction of my dreams, at least yeah. a small step, something that is on my bucket list is something that mm -hmm. I want to see done in this one small, wild, tiny life. And, um, and then kind of just, in honor of those who have passed to yeah. dance, to dance, yes. to eat all the foods, yes. to, to very hedonistically engage with life mm -hmm. um, and appreciate it at every turn and have your gratitude. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just, yes, yes, all, yeah. more, more of that. I know, I'm totally <laughs> like, we are on the same wavelength there, girl. <laughs> Uh, and more films, all yes, the films. more films, all the films you could think of. <laughs> um, and then in, in closing, unless you have anything else you want to add, um, the final question is, if you had a magic door that opened to anywhere, where would you want it to lead? <laughs> I would like to open the magic door into Atlantis when it was above water. Mm. See what life was like then. If the colors were the same, if the smells were the same, how people were in that time. That would be a cool place because I always feel like Atlantis is like this portal into another dimension in my brain. It's like we're stuck here on this, like in an airport until. Mm. So in my brain, it's always like that transfer and you go into like, you know, a higher state of, of being, you know, so that's that's I think where I would go. Yeah, wow. <laughs> I don't I'm even know. Yeah, I don't know what year that was, but I love the aspect of time travel. Yeah. And yeah, where where were they at? Like if we were in yeah. Florida, right? Yeah. In South Florida, mm -hmm. um 10,000 years ago. Yeah. It would be very different. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <Right>. like <laughs> you know, how cool and also uh, bizarre. And, mm -hmm. and just to see that, yeah, absolutely, Atlantis. What that spawned upon me was, have you heard of, are you familiar with vortices, like vortex, energetic yeah. vortex? So I went to Sedona and they have an area that has three vortices. And so it's the vortex of the feminine, vortex of the masculine, and vortex of balance or androgen. And I was like, what's up with these, you know, hippy dippy crystal crunching? Yeah. Like, what is going on here? So I was like, I love trekking and hiking. So I'm yeah. like, let me go visit these vortices. I am a believer in all things vortice, energetic pull. I was like, wow, I get it. And then when I studied more of the masculine versus feminine, it made so much sense to me that we are down here in South Florida and all through our ocean area, Atlantis included, is the most masculine vortex they've ever seen. It is ruled by the sun. It yeah. is a heavier, and then think about the machismo. Uh -huh. Think about the amount of accidents that happen to pedestrians, car accidents, and, and the hustle and bustle that we are mm -hmm. literally always dealing with that does not 
happen in our sister vortex, which is the most feminine vortex that they have, you know, claimed, which is in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> wow. So where if you go over 20 miles per hour, if you don't stop for it to like you are seen as the villain. Yeah. Which I love. Yeah. Like they're putting life above yeah. your urgency, right? It's down mm -hmm. here. Um, you know, you were telling me you were recently um, hit on a, on a cycle by a cyclist. Like yeah. there's a number of our statistics for accidents in South Florida being in the Bermuda Triangle and having the most, uh, the highest operation of masculinity. I'm like, oh, that makes total sense. It totally does. My, my daughter, she's been hit twice now. She got hit once when she was on her bike. And then the second time was like really bad. Like she, the lady hit her going 30 miles an hour and she's walking, you know, and mm -hmm. Here, yeah, it's like people, they don't even have the patience or the, it's not like, it's not patience. It's like, there's there's so much distraction in that chaos. And like you're saying, that makes so much sense of like that masculinity because it's all push, 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 push at every, you know? And I went to California, it was interesting um, in January and I realized like how different yeah, I don't know like how it is over there, but how different it was almost a little bit like you're saying in Oregon, like they stopped selling menthol cigarettes, they stopped selling vapes, like certain things are illegal. And so I was like, I went there and I smoked menthol cigarettes and was like, um, they, they were like, you have to go to Nevada. I mean, luckily I was at Lake Tahoe. So I was like five minutes away from Nevada, but I was like, are you seriously telling me I have to go all the way to Nevada? <laughs> like Thinking it was so far at that time, but it was like two blocks away. But I was like, it was crazy. You know, I felt uh, the, the difference, you know, and, and the pace and the, everything was very different than, not necessarily how I remembered it, but um, then here, you know, <laughs> I love well, my mountains and hiking and all of that stuff as well. So we're always out there with family. So it's Florida is just a, you know, a lot of people moved here. We had the highest statistic of people coming back and or newly, you know, coming to stay during COVID because we are like the anarchist state. We're like live and let live you yeah. know <laughs> and you're like oh shoot whereas other people are like protect people and we're like ah whatever <laughs> <laughs> i gotta get there now i'm two hours late because of traffic you know like <laughs> um but i love it here Me i too. don't mind a little rude I yeah. don't mind the masculinity. I feel very comfortable in a masculine mm -hmm. environment. Um, it's very, you know, like there's Nat Geo moments, like when people are fighting over parking or. Yeah. <laughs> burr, 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 burr. Right. You're like, okay. Um, yeah. There's something refreshing about the rudeness that's very yeah. honest. Um, yeah. There's some extremism. Yeah. Um, I like the word you use right now is honest because I can handle that, especially being a veteran, like in the military, like I can handle like strict or stern or what are you thinking? Like I can handle that and I can be like, okay, I'm not going to go there, but you know, I'm here, <laughs> you know? So I, yeah, there is, there is a comfort about it. I think when you live here and you become like, you're no longer like for me, I was like a tourist for a while. And then it's like, no, I live here now. Like, okay, I'm not going to drive down South Beach during spring break. No. You know, like, <laughs> I thought riding my bike would be better, but obviously. <laughs> like, I even was, you know, like, I wasn't even on a street that there were cars. But it's a beautiful place. And I wake up and I walk. I'm right on the beach. Of beaches mm -hmm. like waking up to seeing the ocean every morning is like life changing, you know. And the weather here, how you're saying it's like oh. so much hotter. It's it's perfect. I I just can't 
see in the sun too much because I've actually had like burns. Like if I scratch a, a sunburn, it'll turn like brown. Like my skin is not like, it, it like scars me almost because it's just so much different than California where I was living or grew up in Santa Cruz. So we're central coast, you know, different, mm -hmm. completely different environments. <laughs> Yeah, off topic, that how was the experience in the military? What was your, um, I guess, role and goal there? And how has it kind of influenced your acting as well? So uh, I was uh, 42 Alpha, that was my, my job. I was human resource specialist when I came in. And then I went, my first duty station was in Korea, uh, in South Korea. And I was working as a uh, registered mail handler. So I was working an hour and a half from where I was based out of mm -hmm. at the Incheon airport. And I would deliver registered mail to uh, area one through four of South Korea. So it was beautiful because I got to see, you know, the land and different parts that you wouldn't normally go to as a tourist or as somebody that's not from there. I had a, a Korean driver for me, so he would drive and we'd have like the huge, you know, um, semis and he would, they would take out all of the mail stuff, but I had specific like registered mail. Um, and so that I had to get clearances for and everything. Um, and then I got pregnant with my daughter there and I came back and um, her father passed away um, recently or like not recent, but like after that, after I had come back and then I had her. Um, and so when all of those things had happened, I think that I, I was planning to re-enlist and I would have went to Germany and then I would have went to Afghanistan. Um, and I, so I re-enlisted, I was planning like, okay, I can get out my 20 year mark, I'll be 38 and my daughter will be 18 and I can start my no new life. You know, like this, I wanted to continue, but um, yeah, after I had gotten married, because I didn't want to be a single mother raising her on my own, I uh, got, I got married and he passed away. And so since I was the sole survivor of my daughter and I would, I, I wasn't able to continue my service. Um, so yeah, they, they had to let me out on the family care plan and cancel my, my reenlistment. Um, and so for me, it was like, I didn't want to go back home. I didn't expect that to happen. I, you know, I had a whole plan of my life and what my life was gonna look like. And it was just all taken away from me. Like I lived on base, so I lost my job. I lost my house. Like I was in South Carolina, like where I didn't have any family or support system other than the military. And so I came back I went back to California and, you know, that's when I started to go to Paul Mitchell and I had um, ended up getting a tumor in my parotid gland while I was in Korea. Mm. Um, and so when they did the surgery, they told me, you know, there's a high chance percentage because it's attached to your nerve that you can come out permanently partially paralyzed. And so, you know, I like, prayed and prayed and like I did a whole photo shoot the week before my surgery like just in case you know and I stopped I had like two months left of, of cosmetology school and I stopped and I didn't end up going back because like after I prayed and I prayed I was like you know what like if I come out and my face is fully functioning again like I and it's not cancer, like, you know, like I am going to do, you know, I, I'm gonna follow, like, what do I really wanna do? And I wanted to, to be an actor because it reminded me of those moments of, you know, these characters that, that had like this 
this huge mountain to to overcome and and the resilience of it in film it was like okay like i want to do that you know like this is like i'm not going to be self-conscious anymore like because it was always like there's someone better than me there's someone prettier than me there's sure. someone more educated than me all of these things so it's like why would they pick me you know and that's where I was at that time in my life you know and so after I came out of surgery and my face was working and everything I packed up my life and I moved to LA and to Burbank actually and I started the New York Film Academy there and I loved it and I, I started to do a, a TV show and it was about like female entrepreneurs that are positive role models for the next generation of, of females. And um, so I came up with like this sanctuary idea for helping uh, soldiers and veterans suffering with PTSD in a holistic manner instead of just pharmaceuticals. And so with that, idea it's kind of still like been happening in fruition even in my writing now you know with the retreat and mental health and all of these things that I'm playing with instead of it just being an everyday work right now you know because there's so many other elements that come along with it that I want to write it first and see it first and see the negative things that can happen and find solutions to them before actually like opening up the door to it happening you know um in reality and so i um i think that with all of those things happening at a young age i when i moved here it was actually i got into a jet ski accident and um i had i it had hit my my front of my face and so it had like knocked my three, like not knocked my teeth out, but like uh, chipped my three front teeth and I had a frontal head injury and it landed on my back cause I like rolled forward cause I had someone behind me. And I had severe strains throughout my whole neck and my back. And I did like a 5K like 10 days later and I just like eliminated myself from like, I know, was... <laughs> but my point of that story is when I came out of the water, like I hadn't lived here yet. And when I came out, like, I remember everything was, I mean, I got hit really hard in the head, but like everything was so vibrant and like the yellows were more yellow than normal yellow. You know, the, the, the whites were brighter white than normal white, like everything. And I didn't feel any pain, even though I was like scratched up and beat up everywhere. And um, so after the healing process, it was like six months of in and out of the hospital and stuff. And, um, and, and after that, like my mother had told me like, you're not the same as you were before, you know, like, and it was very emotional for her. And so I didn't remember how I was before. Like, I didn't see the change other than, like, certain memories that I thought, like, people that had passed, I thought were still alive. Like, it was weird. Like, or that they weren't really dead. It was, like, really emotional at that time. And um, so I came back here. I, I was like, this is, like, I, I, I lost myself here and I changed after that accident. And so I came back here to find myself. And... In, in that journey of coming here and finding myself, like I got, I was like, why, what can, what can I come here for? And I found the New York Film Academy here in South Beach. And I was like, perfect, you know, like, and, and I, I moved here and I started school and, you know, I fell in love with who I became. Mm. It wasn't who I was before, but who I became being here, you know, and, having a positive, uh, healthy method of dealing with that, I think, and, and, and great support. There's been, in this industry, I've met so many sweet people and so many caring people, you know, and I feel like uh, all, of, all of that was my support system, you know, and so, 
this this whole industry is like a gift that I feel like I can I'm lucky enough to be a part of and to be able to meet people that see the way that I see you know sometimes an artist isn't always understood you know <laughs> but here I feel like you know people celebrate that artistic side of people so much more than in other places and I don't know I just feel like this is a great place to be and work with great people and I don't mind the masculinity either <laughs> I know that was like such a long like circle of the military and how it like <laughs> no it's an in-depth look at some of your layers your mm -hmm. onion um, so to speak. And I, I really appreciate you spending the time with us and um, all, and if you have any last thoughts, words, questions, comments, um, <laughs> otherwise I'll, I'll take us off the live and, and we'll chat a little longer on in the studio. In the studio. No, I, I just want to thank you again and thank all of the cast and the crew that made this part happen and I'm so excited for March 28th <laughs> everyone hear that <laughs> and um you know we'll uh I, I don't know I'm just I'm really happy to be a part of this and to see the final project come to life I'm, I'm very excited so thank you Tabitha for having me and for making this live it's always a pleasure talking to you yeah <laughs> no I, I Sincerely can't wait. And again, if you're hearing this and you heard about March 28th, it is a private link oh, yeah. only affair. So you must know me or Clarissa or someone on casting crew, but you can absolutely come. But viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> yeah. um, on behalf of that, we're saying au revoir, au revoir, ciao, ciao, and bye-bye. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs>